In a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of many fine programs brought to you each week on NBC. Tomorrow night, there's top comedy entertainment with The Bob Hope Show, The Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, and Can You Top This with Senator Ford. Bob Hope delivers rapid-fire comedy routines while Phil Harris and Alice Faye bring both mirth and music. It's a great Friday night lineup of comedy programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the Six Shooter a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. attended a Tuesday evening choir practice and quite a spell, but when Reverend Broom stopped by the Tropical Ranch where I was working and asked me if I could manage to take part in this week's rehearsal, well, I sure couldn't see how to do any harm, so I... Bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Anyhow, there we are. About ten of us all gathered around. At John Farley's general store, it was. You see, the town of Easter Quick didn't have a regular church building yet. They held their services and social affairs in the mercantile while they went ahead trying to raise money to put up a community church. It, it was during the second verse of bringing in the sheaves that things started sounding a little peculiar, sort of like the voices and the music were sort of traveling different trails. First, I thought it was me. I never have been exactly what you'd call melodious, but uh, then the other folks were beginning to have their troubles, too. And I, holy smokes, it just was getting terrible. And finally, Mrs. Peebles, she was the organist, she just threw up her hands and stopped even trying to play. No, no, Elvira. Heaven knows I've tried. I've done my best. But this organ just won't play anymore. Well, we'll have Mr. Farley take another look at it, Elvira. I'm sure you'll be able to get it back into shape. There's nothing Mr. Farley can do. Or anybody else. It's plain wore out. You can't expect a thing to last forever. Oh, no, no, of course Seems not. Seems to me but... that after all this time, something could have been done about buying a new organ. When I donated this one to the congregation, I didn't suppose I'd have to go on playing it all the rest of my life. But apparently that's what's expected. No, 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 there's no need to upset yourself, Elvira. Well, I can't help being upset. I I say I can't help it. How do you think I feel every Sunday? All those sour notes and that wheezing and whining. Folks are beginning to think that it's me. That it's my oh, plan. No, no, no. Well, I've been humiliated for the last time, and I won't go through it again. But, 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 but Elvira, Elvira, we gotta have music for Easter service. Oh, music? Well, you certainly don't call that music, do you? Good night, Reverend Bruce. Oh, somebody get it back. All right, everybody. Give me your attention, please. Attention, folks. Quiet down now, please. Quiet down. It appears that matters have come to a serious crisis. It's bad enough for a town by the name of Easter Creek not to have a proper building for Easter services. But to be without an organ and an organist. 
Well, it's a disgrace, a positive disgrace. Now, now we mustn't blame Miss Peebles. That instrument has seen its best days. There's no doubt about it. So I propose that we take immediate steps to purchase a replacement. Uh, 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 just, just one thing, Reverend Boom. Yes, Sheriff. Sure. Uh, where's the money coming from? Well, uh, now I've given that matter serious thought, Sheriff Appleton, and there seems to be only one possible solution to the problem. We'll just have to borrow from the building fund. Uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. sort of like robbing Peter to pay Paul, isn't it? No, no, not exactly, not exactly. Seeing as how we haven't reached our thousand dollar goal anyway, well, the uh, money's just sort of lying there. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know figure. about that. Uh, just how much do you figure a new organ will cost, Reverend Bruce? Well, I've done some investigating in the field, Mrs. Appleton. Last month, when Elvira's foot went through the pump pedal, it seemed like the situation was coming to head. The church over to Whitefield purchased a new organ just last Christmas, and uh, they're willing to sell us their old one. Uh, it's used, of course, but it's still in excellent repair. And they're only asking $95. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I, I'm afraid that's a bit more than we can afford, Reverend. We must have at least $95 in the building fund. We've been putting money aside for the last year. No, no, we ain't. We got forty two fifty. That's the total. Up to and including three dollars sixty five in the cake bazaar a month ago. Forty two fifty. Yep. Oh, I just had no idea I was We're certain. shy over fifty dollars from what it would take to buy the organ. And there just isn't any way we could raise it. Not between now and Easter. Now, now, now. We mustn't give up. After all, we only need um the fifty dollars. No, uh, fifty two fifty. Yeah, yes, exactly. Well, let's see. There was just someone who could take a firm grip of the situation. A, a man who... Mr. Ponson. Uh, yes, yes, Robert. Uh, uh, Mr. Ponson, I know you aren't a regular member of our congregation, and, and you've only been in our midst a few months. But... Well, I, uh... Sure, I'd be glad to donate what I can to the cause, Reverend, but I'm afraid it'd only be a drop in the bucket. Oh, a donation wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Oh? I think perhaps you can be of more service in another fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose that we appoint Britt Ponsett, a committee of one to take charge of the organ raising. Well, oh, now, hold on a minute here, Reverend Brom. We all know that, that you're a man of strength and determination, Mr. Ponsett. That you inspire confidence. And we trust generosity. Well, now, I, I'd sure like to oblige you folks, but what you're asking it was just out of the question. That's all. You wouldn't turn us down in our hour of need. Oh, no, I'm not turning you down exactly. What I mean is, I... It just couldn't be done. Why, you've been a whole year raising forty-two fifty, and now you're talking about raising over $50 in just a few days. Well, we've been going at it the wrong way, I'm Mr. Potson. What? I'm sure your approach will be 100% more effective. Course, My approach? Why, well, certainly. And just to show you how easy it'll be, we'll start things off by taking up a collection right now. <laughs> Sheriff Appleton, will you pass the hat? Well, but, uh, all right, all right, everybody. everybody. Dig down deep. It's a wonderful thing Mr. Ponsett's doing in taking over this fundraising campaign. But, but I never said and a word. And here's our chance to let him know how Reverend. much we appreciate Reverend. Well, the sheriff finished passing the hat and poured it out on the table. And Reverend Broom counted it. Two dollars and fifty cents. And you know, the Reverend was real pleased, too. He said that that meant that I only had $50 to go. A nice round number. Well, not that I had any intention of taking this job of raising the money to get the new organ, you understand. I told the Reverend I couldn't do it. I told him just as plain as day that I couldn't do it. But somehow he got the idea that I had already agreed to do it. And no matter how hard I talked, he just kept... And the uh, other folks, they... They were as bad as Reverend Broom. They I was just outnumbered. That's all it was to it. So, early the next morning, I took my hat in my hand and started out. Oh, must have been getting around noon when I finally came back to the sheriff's office. Oh, come in, Bet. Come in. Morning, Abner. Oh, well, how's everything going? You, you've been out collecting? Yeah, yeah, I've been collecting. Well, 
Well, $11. That's what I got so far. Hey, $11, huh? Yeah. That's a remarkable bit. Simply remarkable. Mm-hmm. But the trouble is I've already asked everybody in town. Uh-huh. Except you, that is. Oh, oh. Oh, well, I suppose I could give you a dollar, but don't forget I was in on the collection at Clarefax. You ain't serious, Britt. You you don't mean you really ask everybody else. As a matter of fact, there is one area I sort of skipped over. Oh? Was those cabins over east of the creek and the ranches out that way. I I haven't visited them yet. eh? Well, you'd just be wasting your time if you did. I would, eh? Yeah, those folks wouldn't be very anxious to help out at church. Mess of thieves, cattle wrestlers, every other kind of riffraff. Oh, is that what they are? Oh. Oh, well, now, that's just a general sense of opinion. And of course, if I could know for certain that we had any actual outlaws living around Easter Creek, if I was positive, that is, well, it'd be my duty to arrest them. I see. Uh-huh. But the fact is, they ain't caused any trouble here in town, none of them. And I can't go around arresting people on rumors. Well, can I, Britt? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I understand Red Eye Kirk has a place somewhere east of town, is that right? That's hearsay, Brett, oh. pure and simple hearsay. Oh, I see. Why, you don't think I'd let a notorious gunfighter like Red Eye live right here under my nose, do you? Well, it's too bad he's not in these parts. Oh? No, I was thinking I might like to pay him a little visit. Well, what on earth for? Well, as long as he's not in the neighborhood, I guess it doesn't matter, Kind of a shame, though. Oh, well, now, if you're really anxious to... Uh, what I mean is... <clears throat> oh, but they do say there's a fellow who somewhat resembles Red Eye. He's got himself a cabin just this side of Deer Mountain. Just this side of Deer Mountain, huh? Hey, uh, now, well, wait a minute, Red. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, what in some did you want to get mixed up with Red Eye Kirk for? What's he got to do with raising money for a new organ? Well, a... Probably won't have anything to do with it, but it's just that I don't want to leave any stones unturned, you see. So long, Abner. It was about a half hour's ride out to the cabin Sheriff Applin told me about. Not much of a cabin, though. Just a shack at the foot of Deer Mountain with a corral off one side. Hmm. There sure were a lot of different brands on the horses in that corral. Well, I pulled up in the yard about 15 feet from the cabin door. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Whoa, Scott. Whoa. For a minute, it didn't seem like there was anybody at home. And then I heard the door start to creak open. The barrel of a forty-five poked into sight. The man behind it was tall, square-shouldered, and thick black beard, and kind of reddish eyes. Howdy. What do you want, mister? I'm looking for Red Eye Kirk. Ain't nobody here by that name. Uh Uh-huh. Well, maybe you'll do, then. What? My name's Ponsett, Brett Ponsett. Ponsett? Now, hold on, hold on. I'll just take it easy with that gun. Get him up. Get him up high. Oh, sure, sure. How's this? You alone? Yep, yep, I'm alone. You must be plumb crazy thinking you can take me single-handed. No, 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 I'm not interested in taking you, Red Eye. I told you that ain't who I am. Oh, that's right, yeah, that's right. Yes, she did. Yes, that's right. Uh, you mind if I get off my horse? Well, just don't try nothing, that's all. And don't move toward your holster. No, all right. That's close enough. Sure, 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 sure. Now, what are you doing out here, anyway? Well, the fact is, uh... You see, Mr. I, uh, Mr. Uh, what'd you say your name was? Uh, Jones. Bill Jones. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mr. Jones... I've been given the job of raising some money. What? Now, now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't my idea, but since it was for such a good cause, I just couldn't turn the folks down. Good cause? A new church organ. That's what I'm collecting for. What? Now, you see, the one that Reverend Broom's congregation has been using, it sort of gave up the ghost last night, and what with Easter coming on, I... Well... Are you joshing me, mister? No, 
No, of course I'm not. You mean you're out here trying to raise money so you can buy a church organ? Not trying. Go on. Get moving before I take a shot at you. You won't give me a hand, huh? I wouldn't give you five cents for every church organ west of Mississippi River. Now, it, it wasn't your money I wanted. What? No, no. No, it wasn't that at all. Well, what the devil did you come around bothering me for? Well, I was thinking that uh, you're a pretty influential man with some of the folks here about. Well, they'll toe the mark if I tell them to. You can bet on that. Yeah, well, that's just the impression I got. So what? Well... It seemed to me that if I was to go moseying around these parts alone, some of your friends might not look too kindly on the idea of giving me donations. <laughs> they sure wouldn't. But on the other hand, if if we were to approach them together as a kind of a team, you might say. A team? That's the general idea, yeah. You... You want me to go along with you? I sure would appreciate it if you would. And and help you raise money for a church organ? That's that's right. Well, I'll be... <laughs> me taking up a Sunday school collection. Well, that's the doggone notion anybody ever had. <laughs> what do the boys think? Huh? Jack Denton, Wisconsin Billy. Why, it'd be almost worth it just to see their faces. <laughs> <laughs> you sure got a sense of humor, Ponson. And you know something this here crazy scheme of yours? I'm going to take you up on it. Uh, you know something, Mr. Jones? Uh, you, know, you know something? I kind of thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman whose name has become a legend throughout the great Southwest. And now, Act Two of the story called Crisis at Easter Creek. Well, the first place we came to was a farmhouse about a quarter of a mile south of Red Eye's cabin. At least it had been a farmhouse once. And there sure wasn't any crops growing in the vicinity now. The porch sagged off at a slant, and the windows were stuffed full of papers and rags. Even the front door looked like it was about to slide off its hinges. The place really looked deserted, but Red Eye gave me the nod, and we pulled up and dismounted. We... Red Eye, he had a great big grin as white as a full moon spread all over his face. Been there ever since we started off. Hey, Denton! Get out here, Denton! It's me, Red Eye! Uh, well, I'm, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I guess you know who I was anyway, didn't well, you? Well, I, I, I had a pretty good idea. Howdy, Red Eye. What can I do for you? Denton! This here is Britt Ponson. Ponson! Howdy, Danton. Now, don't you worry, Red Eye. Even if he did get the draw on you, he ain't turning you over to no sheriff. Oh, put your gun away, Denton. Huh? Use your eyes. Ponson ain't covered me, is he? Then, what are you doing riding along with him? Oh, we got us a little project. Now, you explain it to it, Ponson. Well, the fact is we're collecting money to buy a new organ for Reverend Broom. What? That's right, Jack. Oh, Sounds to me like you said money for a new organ. I must be getting law call. I sure ain't going to argue that with you, Denton. Well, come on. Come on, fork over. You... You mean you're serious, Red Eye? Of course I'm serious. And he must be holding a gun on you. I ain't got all day, Denton. How much we need, Britt? Well, let's see. Uh, Twelve from fifty. Uh, Thirty-eight dollars. Well, you heard him. Denton. Oh, 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 sure, sure, Red Eye, sure. Uh, now, uh, just let me look in my purse here. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, two $20 gold pieces. How's that? Well, I, I didn't mean that you had to contribute the whole thing. Uh, 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 just what? keep the change. Just keep the change. Oh, well, thanks a lot. My pleasure, my pleasure entirely. Well, uh, was there anything else, Red Eye? Uh, no, no, I guess that'll do it for now. Uh, let's go, Ponson. Yeah, sure. Easy, boy. Easy. Uh, I'm glad you boys stopped by. Any time I can... Well, you know where to find me. <laughs> 
Uh, we'll stop at Mike Morgan's place next. That's just down the road. Well, that's mighty considerate of you, Red Eye, but uh, we, we don't need to make another stop. What? Well, what are you talking about? Well, $38, that's all we needed, you see. Oh. See, the, the organ's all paid for. Now. Well, uh, uh, there must be something else the Reverend needs money for, ain't it? Oh, I suppose. Well, the dog's could... gone at once, and I'm enjoying myself. And besides, it wouldn't be fair to the rest of the boys if Denton was the only one who got a chance to do a little contributing to charity. The least we can do is stop at Mike Morgan's, since how we're so close. I said, well, whatever you say. Whatever you say, Red Eye. <laughs> Well, we made about eight more stops before evening, and I must say that all of Red Eye's friends are mighty generous. I, I even had to turn down the offer of a couple of cows for the cause, seeing as how there was some doubt as to the legal owner of the stock in question. But the gold and the silver and the paper money, well, there just wasn't any way of telling how that was come by. At least, there uh, wasn't any way I could think of it. So by sundown, I was carrying quite a load of cash. And we were riding away from Slick Wilson's place when Red Eye gave a little sigh and looked at me sort of disappointed. Well, I guess I better head back home now. Sure, Red Eye, sure. <laughs> what, what's the matter? I was just thinking about how Mike Morgan tripped over his shotgun when I oh. told him what it was we wanted. Oh, <laughs> Nearly yeah. blowed himself right over the bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of a close call, wasn't it? No, going it. I don't see why Wisconsin Billy wasn't at home. Well, he'd have been fit to be tied. Well, we did all right about him. You know. He's say, 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 it's a Brit. Oh, why don't you come back tomorrow, huh? Oh, no. He'd probably be around there. Oh, no, no. No, thanks, Red Eye. I, I got a... Well, I got a whole whole lot more than I ever expected. Huh? And I sure do appreciate your assistance. Oh, pleasure's all mine. <laughs> well, good luck. Same come to on. you. Same to you, Red Eye. Oh. It was about an hour's ride back to town, but before I'd gone more than halfway, I I got the feeling there was somebody following me. I sure didn't like it either. Not with all this money I had in the saddlebags. You know, I gave Scar a little touch of the spur. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Let's go. When I heard the other horse pounding up the trail after me, I said, let's go, boy. Come on. Come on. Let's go. His first shot was over my head. There wasn't any point in trying to outrun him. Scar being as tired as he was, so I slid out of the saddle and I rolled over behind a rock. He was still coming, so I eased my gun out of the holster and inched up to get a look at him. He was a big fella, holding his revolver loose in his hand like he didn't figure on using it. Well, I didn't figure on letting him rob me either. I waited until he was about even with the rock where I was hiding. Then I stood up. Drop it! Drop it! Okay, okay, take it easy, Ponsip. Why, you know who I am, huh? Red Eye told me you was heading this way. I've been trying to catch up with you for the last 15 minutes. You... You mean Red Eye sent you after me? I'll say he did. Well, I'll be darned. Huh. I thought I had him figured different. Now, well, I suppose he told you about the money, too. Sure, yeah. sure, here's mine. Hmm? My share, catch! What? Your your share? For the church organ. Name's Wisconsin Billy. I was out when you come by to collect this afternoon. Oh! Oh! Then I wanted to make certain you got my donation. Oh! Oh, I see. Now, do you mind handing me my gun? You, you got it? No! Not a bit. Here, here you are. Thanks. Well, so long, Ponsick. Oh, yes, yes, so long there. <laughs> I I simply can't believe it, Mr. Ponson. There must be over a thousand dollars here. Just about, Reverend. Just about. Enough for the organ. Enough to build a church, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Ponson. 
Now, you mustn't think me ungrateful, but I'm afraid we can't accept this money. What? Well, you see, Sheriff Appleton told me where you got it. He did, huh? Now, mind you, I don't have any objections myself. I think when help is offered, it should be accepted, irregardless of the source. But uh, some of my people, they aren't quite so broad-minded. And the idea of permitting Red Eye Kirk and those other outlaws to donate to our fund, well... Now, it... now, now, just hold on, Mr. Reverend Brome. Now, just hold on. Now, when I was talking to Sheriff Apperton earlier today, he claimed that there weren't any outlaws in the vicinity of Easter Creek. Well, we don't like to admit that our town is a, a haven. Uh... Why, the, why, the sheriff said that if there were any bandits around here, it was his duty to arrest them. Of course, that would mean getting a posse together. It would probably mean a lot of shooting and killing. Well, Mr. Ponson, everybody knows it. I mean, it's common knowledge. And as for Red Eye Kirk ever having anything to do with that money I raised, well, I, you could be mistaken, Reverend. But, but you were seen riding along. Uh, well, it, it looked like Red Eye. Didn't Sheriff Applin ever tell you about the fellow that lives out near Deer Mountain who's supposed to be the spitting image of Red Eye Kirk? Didn't he well, ever now, tell you about it? Now, Mr. Ponson. No, no, even if... Some of those fellows on the other side of the creek are sort of outside the law. Now, I'm not saying they are, mind you, but even so, you know, accusing them of being criminals, it might stir up a whole lot of trouble. That's true, of course. And besides, Sheriff Applin says they're law-abiding citizens, and he's your duly elected sheriff. He sure ought to know. Hmm? Well, night, Reverend. I'll uh, see you in church. I guess there was a little argument about whether or not to accept the money, but Sheriff Appleton finally convinced folks that they didn't have any right to turn it down. So by the following Sunday, Easter, the congregation had a new organ. And the service was real well attended, too. Now, I, some of the folks didn't look like regular church goers. They, but Red Eye, he, I mean, uh, Mr. Jones, he explained to me afterwards that he and his friends just wanted to make sure their contributions had been put to a good use. I don't know if they've been back since, but you never can tell, you know. Reverend Broom preached a real fine sermon that morning. transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Marvin Miller, Ted DeCorsia, Robert Griffin, and Red Eye Kirk. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Oh, by the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the sick shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards on the NBC Radio Network.